Um, so one of the uh, relations that uh, has followed me in almost all of my life is the passion that I always had with, and I still have with drawing. Drawing it became was always part in one way or in another of my way of communicating. It became almost like a like a second language. Uh, I remember exactly the moment that this. Uh, I tell you a story about the first memory I have of the pleasure I have with drawing, and of course it's a very egocentrical one because it starts from uh, kindergarten. Or I was uh, I was around six years old. And I remember our, our teacher asking us to make a portrait of the room that we were in the school. And everybody made the drawing and then uh, suddenly she asked me to go to the, we finished the drawing, and she asked me to go to the, to the table and show my drawing to everybody. And I realized that I did something that nobody else uh, did, which was to try to create perspective inside the, the room. Uh, of course, and that's the moment that click and it is still in my memory where I see that I'm able to do something that was somehow uh, understood as special. This is the first memory I, I have with this uh, medium, with this uh, ability of uh, visualizing and, and of course then from, then from then on drawing became always a part of my, of my practice, of my interest, of my hobby, of my... Uh, when I was a kid I was sure that I would become a comic maker. And uh, with one of my best fr uh, friends, we started for six, seven years to just draw everything we could. We made thousands of comics. Then, of course, something was missing in my, in my, in my passion that was the ability of, uh, of uh, uh, creating something with drawing that had a social impact. And comic, uh, a comic drawer is a very it's a very isolated work, it's a very antisocial uh, profession. And then, you know, from, then, from that point I switched it into, okay, maybe I can draw and make uh, art, painting. And then I wanted to become a painter. Then after that, you know, I went to school and everything, but I was still unsatisfied. And I said, okay, maybe I will have to put away this idea of painting, I want to become an artist, you know, that's the thing. But was always like very strict. That's what I've been doing all my life. To know exactly that I want to be that because that's the only thing that I can do in a, you know, in a right way. <laughs> and uh, and now I find myself, uh, I would say, 30 years after this experience started, uh, losing a bit this uh, uh, expectation of what I will be: artist, not artist, painter, drawing, comic and it becomes all one. It's like I love drawing, I love creating structures uh, with drawing that uh, can uh, uh, create social uh, meaning or gatherings or uh, question uh, spaces or institutions or, or uh, questions, the place where we are and the relation we have with the space. That's what I do with drawings. And uh, so when uh, you ask me to create a t-shirt, for me it's not uh, uh, like something that goes parallel or it's like a, a extra experience that goes around what I do, but I choose drawing also because it has this ability of bridging uh, the relation with people and instead of creating a wall, which sadly sometimes art does, to create more of a, a distance than not a... a, a, a you know, participatory element. Uh, drawing does exactly the contrary. Drawing is a very easy tool that everybody can understand. And then, of course, you can buy, you can build many layers of it. But the important thing is that everybody can jump on the first one. Then your experience and your knowledge, of course, brings you to different places. But drawing is exactly the place that brings everybody in an understanding what's going on. So if it's on a T-shirt, on a paint, on a frame on a projection, it doesn't matter if it's a little card or a drawing on a beer deck or it's, a, it's still an amazing form of communication. And uh, so thank you for making me <laughs> express some of my drawing with it. <laughs>